my assistant walks in and says, uh, this patient uh, wants an examination, but he just wants antibiotics, that's it. Um, my assistant says, well, we do a full examination here, and it'll be, well, I'm not sure we'll be able to prescribe antibiotics. It'll be up to Dr. Sheldon. He said, well, I'll listen to what Dr. Sheldon has to say. You can see the x-ray. Let's take a look at the photographs. What do you think of that? Have you ever seen a patient like that? Well, I have. You probably all have. What do you do? This is a cringe-worthy <laughs> uh, look, isn't it? Now, I don't have to go through the FMX on this, do I? Well, maybe I do. So let's do that. So let's go through this full mouse series. And I want, again, we've talked about this in other venues. I want you to look at what is there rather than what's not there, okay? So just look at that first. And let's go through this and see if there's any bone support any place. Is there? Yeah, okay. There's bone support on tooth number four or five, whatever that tooth is. Okay, tooth number six, broken off of the gum line. Is there bone support? Yes, and actually this is... Maybe tooth number seven. He's missing six, or he's missing seven. I can't tell which is which. Eight, loosey-goosey. I can wiggle that in my hand. But nine still have, has some bone, bone support. Eleven still has some bone support. Even 12 still has some bone support. We can't see the PA on 16, but 16 also has some bone support. Don't jump ahead to treatment until at least we evaluate the bone support. Now take a look on the lower. What do you think of the bone support on 18 and 19, if that's what they are, maybe 17 and 18? Can you work with that? How about 22? Okay, you'll be able to see it better in the CAT scan, but I think you all have an idea as to what's there. Okay, lower incisors. Okay, missing bone support, but look at what's down here. Look what's over here. Look what's over here. It's a gross-looking case, but the idea is, in spite of the gross-looking case, in spite of the fact the patient hasn't seen a dentist in 20 years or more, there's still bone support. Now, the story is this. He's, his kids asked him to come in. He's actually moving to another city in two weeks. But for whatever reason, his kids told him to come in and, 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 and see us first. Why haven't you gone to a dentist? Well, it's fear and it's I don't want to spend the money. Okay, you both know that and I've heard that before. I said, well, all right, um, what do you want? And then I also asked him, well, if your kids told you to come in here, how come your kids aren't in the operatory with you? He said, well, his wife is here. Well, I said, where is she? She's in the reception room. I said, well, shouldn't she, we get her in here? And she sa he says, he's reluctant. I said, come on. She's here. Either you're going to tell her the story or I'm going to tell her the story. <laughs> What's better? <laughs> so he finally reluctantly agreed to bring her in. Now, while we're waiting to get for her to come in, he's talking about how much money it costs and wants to know what would happen if we did implants in the upper arch and I gave him a figure, and he said, there's no way on earth I'm going to be able to explain that. I said, you don't have to. We can extract the teeth, put it in denture, and we can just uh, see how that works first before you make that decision. And then his wife walks in. And then at that point, I do a full examination. Do I probe the upper teeth? Absolutely not. What I did was to do mobilities on all of the teeth first. Okay, so there's no trauma. Understand this patient is afraid to be in the dental office. Why do we need to traumatize by probing these teeth? I don't have to probe any of these teeth. Do you? I don't. You know, I, we just don't have to. But mobility will tell us something. So I um, checked mobility. had kind of a, like an ankles class two, almost a division two type of thing. And, and, and the incisors were loose and tooth number eight. You can wiggle, wiggle that as you would expect based on what you're seeing here. So at that point, when I did the mobility, I said, all right, there's no way that we that there's going to be any advantage for saving the upper teeth. And the upper is going to be a denture. But on the lower teeth, there's some bone support there. And I wiggle the teeth, and the teeth didn't wiggle very much at all. So I said, you're, you're moving out of town. Um, and he told me where he was going, and I happen to know a great period on us where he's going. And so I said, listen, I will be able to develop an entire report. I'll say what I can do. 
And then his wife says, I don't think he'd like to denture. I think he needs implants. And I gave, him a fig I gave her a figure of what the implants would cost. And she said, we can get it. We can apply for a loan. We can do that. Just matter of bringing the patient through. Now, the patient will never see us again. The patient will go to this very good periodontist in another city. And I said, you know, and he'll find the best restorative dentist for you and get things straightened out. And I think we'll be able to do pretty well on your lower teeth. He left with a big smile. He said, this was worth it. Of course, I said, I can't prescribe antibiotics. It's not going to make any difference anyway. And these days with the microbiome, we don't, we don't prescribe antibiotics willy-nilly anyway. But it's, it's not going to do you any good. But I'm going to get you lined up with somebody who's really, really good somewhere else. And we're going to make sure you're taken care of. And yes, he had a big smile. He said, this was really worthwhile, my coming back. I, we gave him a good experience. We listened to what he had to say. And we gave him some solutions and gave him somebody that could treat him. We could have treated him too. In a case like this, what would I do? I would bring him through this slowly. I would extract the upper teeth and make a temporary upper denture. Okay, get, because number eight's gonna come out, who wants that? Um, get, get the upper teeth taken out, give him a temporary upper denture if he's ready to do that. If he's not ready to do that, I'm fine taking out tooth number eight and putting in an Essex while he's waiting to do everything else. We're not gonna clean up the upper teeth. But during that time, we can get the lower teeth done. We can, we can do some root planning. We can give him some oral hygiene and structure. We can get him back to normal. You know what his wife said? Will his mouth smell okay? By the way, my assistant said, his mouth smells worse than any other mouth I've ever smelled. Okay, and we'll gradually work with him, and he'll get better, and he'll have a smile on his face. I can't tell you how many patients I've seen like this who began like this and ended up with... Um, Ended up being good patients. They're not perfect patients. <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot going on here. But he's going to get to keep his lower teeth, and he's going to be comfortable in the upper arch. And he'll be happy, and he'll be smiling, and he won't smell again. That's what we can do. Whether we do it or not, okay, maybe I'll get a good Google review. Maybe I'll get that. But uh, it all comes around. Uh, as a matter of fact, his kids referred him here. They had to have heard something about us. It's those kinds of things that we do. Just listen, talk, and explain, and don't traumatize, and um, be a friend. <laughs> and uh, it can produce some, uh, some good results. Um, I'm sure this periodontist in this other city uh, will, um, will be able to um, take care of him very well.